All I wanna get is a little bit closer. <laughs> Tegan and Sarah are by far the most well-known modern band amongst lesbian performers. These Grammy-nominated artists are different. They stand out because they're identical twins. We're not just lesbians. We are lesbians, but there's always been something about Sarah and I. Tegan and Sarah! Celebrated musicians and global LGBTQ icons. They're songwriters and musicians who have sold over one million albums. You don't understand. People are going to, like, flip their <laughs> They see you too. Tegan and Sarah went on the Pants podcast, and it's a really big deal because they are super private. Bonus, we learn about Tegan's extremely hidden, extremely private girlfriend, Sophia Snow. How did Kate and Leisha f this interview up? <laughs> Hi, I'm Amanda. I'm addicted to whipped cream, and this is my really gay YouTube channel. <sighs> People love the Pants Podcast. I did a review on it a few weeks ago if you want to check that out now. But basically, it's a huge hit. Emma says, the Pants Pod is the best podcast in modern history. Oh my God. So honest, fun, and gay. Thank you at Kate Minnig and at Leisha Haley for lighting up my day. Best podcast in modern history. Well, that's not true. OMG, I was listening to the Pants Podcast and it was so soothing. It's like being a baby in the arms of your mother if your mother was a big old running a podcast. They reached their first million downloads this week. And if they keep continuing to get this quality of guests, there is nothing that's gonna stop them. When I heard Tegan and Sarah were coming on the pod, I immediately knew that I had to go listen to it and give you my obnoxious two cents. Okay, here we go. I just need to preface this by saying, I'm probably scaring everybody. I need to preface this by saying, I love all four of the women on this episode. This is gonna be a mixed review from me. I didn't see anybody else really criticizing this episode. I'm guessing because it's Tegan and Sarah. Like, are you crazy? It's Tegan and Sarah. Yeah, I am crazy. That's why I'm running a gay YouTube channel. Did my hat just fly off the wall? Stay on there. Hear me out because my thoughts on this, I think are pretty accurate. By 13 minutes in, we have learned nothing new or interesting about Tegan and Sarah. The hair discussion. Let's talk about the intro that was a never ending hair discussion. By the 100th statement about Tegan or Sarah's hair that I heard, I was so sick of listening to them talk about hair. Why would they start the episode by being like, lesbian haircuts, why is that a thing? I hate that stuff about gay hair and not gay hair. And then spend minutes talking about lesbian haircuts. Here's why I think they did it. Somewhere around the middle of the interview, I realized that Kate and Leisha do not prepare for these interviews at all. They aren't writing down questions. They aren't researching before they do these interviews. They're just getting together with their friends for a fun little Zoom sesh. And to be fair, we're all in the windows like, yeah, give me some more of that friend Zoom sesh. But it's Tegan and Sarah. And if it sucks, oh well. We're still the chicks from the L word. Who cares? I care. I care. Excuse me. Excuse me. I care. I no plan. I realize it's Tegan and Sarah who are asking the majority of the questions and starting new topics. Kate and Leisha are probably standing by thinking about new things to ask them about their hair. 20 minutes into the podcast, Leisha says something that at first glance appears kind of minor in significance. But if you really take a magnifying glass to it, it explains the early tone for the episode. I will admit, things got better. Thank the Lord! We learned stuff. <laughs> but the early tone of the episode was so boring. Leisha Haley says to Tegan that she promised Tegan's partner, Sophia Snow, that they would not talk about her on the podcast, that they wouldn't bring Sophia Snow up. What this tells me is that Kate and Leisha did have things they weren't supposed to talk about. And I've seen interviews 
like this on almost every great podcast that I listen to, especially podcasts that revolve around TV shows or like fandom ship. These niche podcasts get their royalty of, of their genre. They, they get the interview of their career. They score the big one. But in order to get the interview or because they feel so nervous about having somebody that's so, you know, high up in the importance scale, they don't necessarily ask the good juicy questions. It's not the host's fault if they get a crazy famous person like Beyonce on and Beyonce's like, I'm not gonna talk about the cheating scandal. But it seemed like they were a little nervous to ask them about their childhood, ask them about what made them who they are, why they became who they are, what it feels like being lesbian royalty. Otherwise, why wouldn't they ask them more interesting questions? I just am left to assume because all the other interviews were really great. I still think it's amazing that they had Tegan and Sarah on and after the first half of the episode, everybody got a little more relaxed. They got all that hair talk out of the way and they started having some real conversations. We did get this gem of a sentence from Sarah. We're all talking through our pain. We are. <laughs> it reminds me of when my girlfriend will like sometimes bring out these phrases and techniques that she's learned in HR training. Oh, I hear what you're saying and I'm sorry that you feel that way. Bitch, don't you use I'm sorry you feel that way on me. We learned about their romantic types. Sarah likes to be dominated and Tegan is obviously a top. I connect and sort of am drawn to people who can teach me things and Tegan is drawn to people who she can teach. <laughs> you like mean people. Highlight when Sarah randomly mentions being attracted to Kamala Harris and everyone agrees in unison. Hello, me too. Neither Tegan or Sarah have driver's licenses. They say like they just didn't think of it in high school. Is this a Canadian thing? We learned that Sarah got wasted at Leisha Haley's on Thanksgiving. My personal favorite moment of the whole episode is when Leisha asked Tegan and Sarah if they are ever coming back to America and Kate chimes in to say this. Why would they? For real, the best part of this episode was getting a glimpse into the four of their friendships and how tight-knit this community is. They seem to have a lot of mutual friends. You can tell they really know each other as people. It's not like a fake celebrity friendship. You all probably hate me. Because I said something slightly negative about Tegan and Sarah, but don't hate me. I actually am glad they interviewed them. It's definitely worth a listen. I definitely recommend listening to it. It wasn't their best episode and it probably should have been. If you liked my review, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you for your time. I'm sending everyone happy vibes.